The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We're looking at Luke chapter 4, verses 20 to 27. Luke writes, Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus had been preaching and teaching and performing miracles in the area called Galilee, the northern portion of the land of Palestine, and when he came to his hometown of Nazareth, oh, you can understand the people there because they had heard about his preaching and teaching and miracles. They desired to hear him preach and teach and they were probably looking forward to seeing some of these miracles that they had heard about as well. And in the synagogue that Sabbath day, Jesus read the scripture lesson, a reading from the book of Isaiah, and it was common custom that visiting rabbis like Jesus was considered to be, would be asked to do that. Well, Jesus read a portion of scripture that was from the book of Isaiah, and I'd share that with you again, where he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. His listeners, probably pretty much all of them, would have heard those words and say, hey, those are words that are talking about the promised Messiah, about the promised Savior. And then Jesus, as they were probably thinking about that, he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And our reading, it tells us that at first the people were amazed at those words that Jesus spoke. And, and then all of a sudden they said, hold it now. Isn't this the Joseph's son? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Well, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Jesus was preaching the very word of God. He was preaching about the way of salvation, which was, of course, in Jesus himself. But the people of Nazareth, when they looked at Jesus, they could just see the carpenter's son. They were too close to him to see who he really was. And, well, for the same reason, that's probably why it doesn't often happen within our church that a pastor or a young man who grows up in a congregation and becomes a pastor probably isn't going to end up coming back to serve that congregation. It does happen, but the fact is, is that when someone would come back like that, there might be older members who can look at the new pastor and say, I remember when he was that big. And I remember when he did this or this as he was growing up and, and maybe it's not the best exactly situation. 
And so it was with Jesus. Of course, he's the sinless son of God. They couldn't look back and say, I remember when he did this. Something wrong, that is, because he didn't do anything wrong. But here he was faithfully preaching the word of God to them, which proclaims the way of salvation, which is in Jesus himself. But the people looked at him and saw him as the carpenter's son and not the savior. And now if you think about that, isn't this same thing true today? It's impossible for anyone to look at Jesus and see Jesus as the Savior unless the Holy Spirit has graciously worked faith in that person's heart. And see now, when the Holy Spirit works that faith in a person's heart, then he has the proof that's needed for us to be able to see Jesus and not just see him as the carpenter's son, but see him as the savior, as the, the way of salvation. But again, without the Holy Spirit, people can see Jesus as an important, an important influential person, but they won't see him as the savior. Well, Jesus said, I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. In both of these instances, the judgment of God is foreshadowed and and a, a tragic thing being spoken to those people of Nazareth. Here they had the opportunity to hear the word of God, but they were rejecting Jesus. And well, with the case of the widow that Elisha went to, with the, with the case of Naaman the Syrian, well, what happened is that the, the prophets, they went elsewhere because in Israel, God was being rejected. And now what Jesus was saying is, you're having an opportunity here to hear the word of God. Take advantage of that opportunity. Treasure those opportunities so that you can grow in your faith and, and your knowledge about the plan of salvation, the way of salvation. And now what he's also saying to us is that while the word of the Lord is near us, we also have opportunities to grow in the grace and love of God. And because we have those opportunities now, well, none of us knows how long those opportunities are going to last. What happened for the Jews is that well, because they rejected the word, the word kind of departed from them and and it went to the Gentiles instead. Well, so for right now, what this reading is saying to us is, oh, treasure and take advantage of all of those opportunities you can to grow in the grace and love of God because the word of the Lord is near us right now. We'll know more and more and about the way of salvation, about Jesus our Savior. Your faith will be strengthened and you'll be better equipped to fight the good fight of faith and, and to spread the news about the way of salvation. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us faith in your Son, our Savior. By grace we have faith, the proof, which is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Thank you for giving us the proof we need that, is, that Jesus is our Savior and the way for our eternal salvation. We pray in his name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you always.